In this video, I will show you the power triangle of series RLC circuit. What is power triangle? Power triangle is a graphical representation of real power, reactive power and apparent power in a right triangle. That means we will have a right triangle in which we will represent the real power, reactive power and apparent power. And that triangle is known as power triangle. See, each side of the triangle represents a particular type of power and we indicate the power P in horizontal axis. P that means real power or active power. We represent the reactive power in vertical axis and we represent the apparent power as the hypotenuse of that triangle. That means we will have a right triangle. In that right triangle, we will indicate the reactive power in this axis and we will represent the apparent power in the hypotenuse of the right triangle. Okay, so let's say I have this series RLC circuit. I have this resistor R which is connected in series with the inductance L which is connected in series with the capacitance C. In this circuit we are applying an alternating voltage V equal to Vm sin omega t. Let's say the RMS value of this applied voltage is capital V and the RMS value of the total current in the circuit is I. Now see the inductance L will provide inductive reactance XL opposition to current flow in the circuit and the capacitance will provide XC opposition to current flow in the circuit. As a result, you will see we will get IXL voltage drop across inductor, IXC voltage drop across capacitor. Now see, in the circuit, so there are three possible cases. First one is that XL of this inductance could be greater than XC. Second case is that our XL will be less than XC and the third case XL could be equal to XC. We get the voltage triangle in case of XL greater than XC or XL less than XC. Now let me show you these two cases and power triangle in both phasor diagram. See if we multiply the voltage phasor of triangle by current I that will give us power triangle. Okay. If we multiply each of the voltage phasor with current I, that will give us power triangle. See, this is the voltage triangle when our phasor diagram, when inductive reactance is less than capacitive reactance, when XL is less than XC. In that case, we will represent VR equal to IR in the horizontal axis. We will represent the Vc minus Vl in the vertical axis and if I add the voltage Vr and Vc minus Vl I will get V applied voltage phasor V. See Vr equal to Ir Vc minus Vl equal to I x c minus x l and the voltage V is equal to I into Z. This is the phasor diagram when XL is less than X C. Now see when XL will be greater than X C, I will get this phasor diagram or voltage triangle. In the horizontal axis, I will take V R which is in phase with the reference current I. Okay. V L minus V C will represent V L minus V C and in this direction we will get V L minus V C if I take the phasor sum of VR and VL minus VC, I will get applied voltage phasor V and this will be a right angle therefore this will be a voltage triangle which is a right triangle in which we have these three voltage components VR, VL minus VC and this V. Now see if I apply this voltage triangle with I that means I will multiply each of the voltage with current I. Therefore, here I will get I into Vr or I square R. I into Vr or I square R. And here I will get I into Vc minus Vl or I square into Xc minus Xl. I into Vc minus Vl 
equal to i square xc minus xl or in this hypotenuse i will get i into v this i is the phasor representation of total current and this v is the is the phasor of the applied voltage so here i will get i into v or i square z now see here i will get v i or i square z see in this direction i am getting i into v r which is equal to i square r and this will represent the real power in this direction i will get reactive power i into v c minus v l or i square into x c minus x l the real power component and the reactive power component will form the apparent power which is equal to multiplication of rms value of voltage and rms value of current v i or v i is equal to i square z and this will be power triangle because this reactive power will create a right angle with the real power axis or with the reference axis and this is the right triangle when xl is less than xc now there comes a parameter into existence that is complex power complex power is the sum of real power and reactive power but in complex form see here if i take the real power and reactive power you will see if we draw the real and imaginary axis our real power will go in this direction and if i take imaginary axis this will indicate positive imaginary axis and this will indicate negative imaginary axis as reactive power is going in this direction therefore here i will get p minus jq and that will be our complex power okay now see now see here we have vr vl minus vc and this v if i multiply each side of the voltage triangle or each voltage feather of the voltage triangle with current i that will be our power triangle see if i multiply this with i i will get vr into i or i square r see i into vr or i square r this will represent the real power okay and if i multiply this with i i will get i into vc minus vl or i square into xl minus xc i into vc sorry i i into vl minus vc equal to i square xl minus xc i into vl minus vc equal to i square xl minus xc this will indicate our reactive power and if i multiply this with i i will get iv or i square z okay so here i will get vi or i square z this will be apparent power apparent power will be the sum of real power and reactive power if i consider our real and imaginary axis you will see our reactive power will go in this direction or in positive imaginary axis therefore real power p plus reactive power plus jq will form our complex power s and we get the power triangle when we multiply each side of the voltage phasor with current i okay now see uh, this is our apparent power which will create an angle phi with the reference i axis you will see when the circuit will be inductive therefore you will see this will be an inductive circuit because inductive reactance will dominate the capacitive reactance and in case of an inductive circuit reactive power is positive therefore this angle phi will be positive and here you will see in this case our inductive reactance will be less than the capacitive reactance that means here capacitive reactance will dominate therefore the phase angle phi will be negative because with respect to reference axis i have to rotate an angle of phi but in clockwise direction and we know that negative angle is created when a straight line cuts a reference axis in clockwise direction okay so when when the circuit will be a capacitive circuit our reactive power will be negative and fa this phase angle will also be negative so i will get phase angle equal to minus phi okay that's it thank you